Hey guys, it's Nate here. Today I want to talk to you about the most common data science interview question. It's the most common because it covers several technical concepts that you'd use every day on the job. So let's cover these concepts and illustrate what I actually mean by going through a real interview question. So let's start now. There are usually several technical concepts interviewers are testing for on a data science interview, but they only have time to ask one or two questions. So they'll try to pack these concepts into one question. So it's important to know these concepts so you know what to look out for on an interview. So what are some of the concepts that they are testing for? Well, there are three common technical concepts that they want to see you have an understanding of. They're case statements, joins and subqueries or CTEs. So if you know how to do the question that we're about to cover, you'll be fine for at least the first round interview before they jump into the harder stuff. So let's go through this interview question and cover these three technical concepts in depth. The link to this question is in the description below if you wanna follow along with me. Okay, so the question's loaded up here. Let's read it out loud first. Uh, this question is from Microsoft. It's called premium versus freemium. The question reads, find the total number of downloads for paying and non-paying users by date. Include only records where non-paying customers have more downloads than paying customers. So like I said, there are three concepts that are going to be tested in this question. So the first concept that we'll cover is joining tables. Because what I see here are three tables. And if I see multiple tables on an interview, I'm most likely nine out of 10 times going to have to join them some way. So this is basically the lowest bar that you would need to jump over in order to be a data analyst or a data scientist. So this is definitely going to be tested on in an interview. So really the question you have to ask yourself is what type of join do I need to answer this question? So obviously there's the inner join, the left and right outer joins and the cross join. I typically see a left join and I sometimes see an inner join. Almost never really see or never really need to use a right join and I never really see a cross join either. So in this case, if we're trying to figure out if we wanna use an inner join or a left join, let's just take a look at the data structure and the underlying data. So our first table user dimension basically has the user ID mapped to the account ID. And then the account dimension table is account ID mapped to whether or not this user or this account is a paying customer. And then this download facts table here basically gives us the user ID, the number of downloads that they've performed and on what date. So when I look at the table schema and then look at some of the underlying data, my assumption here is that the user dimension and the account dimension tables are master tables. So I have all of the users listed that were ever a user and I have all of the accounts listed that were ever accounts. And then this download facts table here is really a subset of the user dimension and the account dimension table. Not every user, not every account has made a download. So in my head, I'm thinking of two things. I could use an inner join if I just want to count the downloads. I should use a left join if I also want to count the number of users that never made a download because they wouldn't be captured in this download facts table, right? But they would be captured in the user dim table or the account dim table. So talk to your interviewers, see what they want in the solution, and then either pick an inner join or a left join. In this case, we're gonna use an inner join. And so let me show you how to join these three tables together. Okay, so this is the join statement here. It's very simple, basically just left joining the three tables together. And as you kind of tra traverse from one table to the next, you'll notice what the foreign keys are because the naming convention is pretty standard, right? So account ID here is the primary key for the account dimension table. And then you see that in the user dimension table, you see account ID and that's obviously a foreign key. But if you don't really know or you can't make that assumption, then ask the interviewer what that foreign key is to link the tables for your join. So if I run this query right here, I basically just get all of the columns. So when I take a look at the output, I'm starting to see what I actually need to do. I have paying customer here, I have the date, and then I have the number of downloads. So basically those are the three things I need to answer this question. So the next technical concept to cover is case statements because what I think I need to do here is categorize a paying customer from a non-paying customer 
and then count up the number of downloads that they have had and then sort it or group it by date. I need a case statement to do that. All right, so the next step is written right here, categorize paying and non-paying customers and then count the total number of downloads between user types. So let me show you how I would implement a case statement here in this query. So the case statement would basically look like this, case when, and then I want to use the paying, paying customer column here, and if it's a paying customer, it looks like the value would be yes. Then I'm going to take the value from the downloads column I'm going to end it, and then I'm going to do the same thing for a non-paying customer here. So let me just add the column for paying customer here. I'm going to name this as paying, and then name this as non-paying. If I run this query, now I understand what's going on. I have the values for paying customer, and I have the categories for paying customer and non-paying customer and then the values of the downloads here. So this first row, the customer is a non-paying customer and they've downloaded six times. This customer is a paying customer and they've downloaded six times as well. And it just goes on for every row in the table. So the implementation of this case statement is not super useful yet. What we wanna do is grab insights from this case statement, which is really about counting the number of downloads and organizing that by date. So that's the next step in terms of what the interviewer is testing for. Can you organize the data in a different way or manipulate the data in a different way? So we're gonna apply a simple aggregate function, the sum function to count up the number of downloads, and then we're gonna group by date. And this should be very close to the final answer. So all I really need to do is just add the sum functions to the case statements. And then I'm going to remove this paying customer column and instead use the date column from the download facts table. And then because I have two functions, two aggregates and a variable called date, I need to group by date. And then what I'll also do is order by date. Make it ascending. Earliest date first to, to latest date last. So if I run this query here, now what I get is something that's more insightful than just the implementation of the case statement. I have the date, I have how many downloads from paying customers and how many downloads from non-paying customers, and I have it organized from the earliest date all the way to the latest date in the table. So this gives us an understanding of how many downloads that we have by user type. Now the last technical concept I'll cover here, let's go back to the question real quick. The question, reads, include only records where non-paying customers have more downloads than paying customers. So the only records I want to keep are the ones where this non-paying column here has a larger number than this paying column. So we want the second row, the third row, the fourth row, uh, but we don't want this first row or this row right here where it's there's a tie. So we need to somehow apply this logic to this table right here. And that will introduce the third technical concept that interviewers could be testing for. And that is the implementation of a subquery or a CTE. So why test for a subquery or a CTE? Most complicated solutions take more than one step to solve. So what they're actually testing for is whether or not you can break up your solution into multiple steps or into multiple logical statements that is organized in a way where somebody can actually follow your work. This is especially useful in practice because you'll probably be writing code that's hundreds of lines long. And so it's not gonna be obviously one giant SQL query, it's gonna be broken up into multiple subqueries, CTEs, temporary tables to get things organized and manipulated the way you want it to be. So the interviewer or the company is really testing for this pragmatic logical approach to your solution. So let's implement the last technical concept, subqueries, CTEs. So we wanna include only records where non-paying customers have more downloads than paying customers. So this whole thing right here will become my subquery. So I can make this query a subquery simply by putting another query outside of it, just like I'm doing right here, select star from, and then my original query in between these parentheses. And to apply the logic where I just want to include records where non-paying customers have more downloads than paying customers, I'm adding this having clause right here with this logic saying, 
that the difference between the number of downloads for a, from a non-paying customer minus the number of downloads from a paying customer needs to be greater than zero. So 11 minus 19 is negative eight. We don't wanna keep that record, but 15 minus 14 is one, so we're gonna keep that record. So that's what this having clause is basically saying. I'm then gonna order by the date. And then lastly, adding a group by statement with all of the columns from my subquery. So if I run this query right here, what we get is essentially only records where the number of downloads from a non-paying customer is greater than the number of downloads from a paying customer. And if we check the solution, the solution is correct. All right, so those are the three technical concepts that are most likely going to be tested on your data science interview. They can be tested one by one, or they can be wrapped up into one problem that you would have to solve in an interview. So it's important to know these three concepts really well, but in addition to that, it's really important to understand how you can apply all of them in one problem and how you can identify when to use these technical concepts. So I hope this was useful. If you need more practice on this, there are a lot more questions on the Stratascratch platform. They contain real interview questions from real companies just like this one right here, where they test all of the technical concepts that they want you to know in order for you to get the job. So if you know how to do them all, you'll be well prepared for your interview. So I hope you like this content. Please let me know if you have any feedback or any additional topics you want me to cover in the comment section below. If you want to see more of my content, please subscribe to my channel. The content I create is for the advanced beginner to intermediate level data scientists, typically data scientists preparing for their first job to a few years into their first job. So this is sort of the sweet spot where my content may be helpful for you guys. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching.